Hey everybody, welcome to the world of paper sculpture. So you can see what I have here. I just have a regular piece of white drawing paper, my scissors, I have some construction paper. I cut it in half. I took about three or four pieces. I'll get the rest of this out of the way. And I actually only need half. I don't wanna waste any paper by throwing it away. So I have my glue stick. I have my regular glue. I'm gonna show you how to use both for these. So what we wanna do is we wanna turn our paper into construction paper strips. So there's my first set. You may need a grown-up's help in cutting this, or maybe you wanna cut one piece at a time. It's okay if it's not perfect, as long as they are in strips. So I hold them together. I'm gonna to stop there, because that looks like enough for me to get started. So you'll see that I have all my paper strips here. I'm just gonna move some of these over and we're gonna talk about the basic ways you can fold a paper strip. Now number one, you can do what's called the fan fold. You go forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward, all the way down the paper strip. And what you're gonna notice when you open it up kind of pops into this zigzag line we've created. The other kind of line, I'm gonna use my finger, or fold I should say, I'm gonna curl it around my finger, like this. And when I curl it around my finger, it's kind of a thick spiral, but if I take a pencil and I curl it, I'm going to line it up, almost like a giant letter T, and then I'm gonna roll, roll, roll all the way to the top. And you're gonna notice the difference between the two kinds of spirals I create. Let's take a look at my finger and let's take a look at the pencil. Pencil is much skinnier than my finger, so watch what happens to the spiral, ready? Wow, super tight. You see the difference between the two spirals? So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna make a bunch of different shapes for yourself. I have one zigzag, I'll make my next zigzag a little skinnier. I go forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward, all the way down. And you'll see that this zigzag, I made a little bit tighter or smaller. See the difference? Yep. So there's a couple of little other tricks we could try out. One of the things I want people to remember is when you do that fold and we go forward, backward, if you keep going forward, you'll get an interesting shape. It just won't be that shape I created there. So you see how the difference is when I fold it forward? Interesting. But this one I love so much because it could look like a staircase. It could look like a monster's jagged smile or a dinosaur's back, depending on how you're looking at it. So what we're gonna do with all of our pieces, here I have some that are folded, is we're going to use the glue stick or the glue. I'm gonna show you how to use both. When we use the regular glue, we have to twist the orange top. We have to here, if we can hear air coming out, we have to turn it over and let the glue run down into the orange part. And then we just touch it down and we give a gentle squeeze and we rub. I made like a little glue dot. Gentle squeeze and we rub. That way we don't make a big glue puddle. It's not good for our paper and it gets on things and we don't need that to happen. So I have my two glue, I'm gonna put one here and I'm gonna to count to 10, count to 10 with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, except I don't want it to lay flat on my paper. I want it to pop right off like a sculpture. And when we do this, we're able to create something that's three-dimensional. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now, if I laid it flat on my paper, it kind of looks okay, it's nice. That would be a collage if I glued it down like this. But if I want it to be a sculpture, I have to have it pop off some way. So I'm gonna take my other piece here. I'm gonna put a little glue on the edge or end of it. I just make a little swirl so that it sticks. And I'm gonna have it hold on to here. Can you count to 10 again? 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to do the same thing here. Teeny bit of glue. I like to put it on the back of the orange as opposed to the white of the paper because it just makes a little less mess. And there we go. And you can see that because I'm making a paper sculpture, there's lots of different ways of looking at it. You can look at it when I hold it this way. You can look at it when I hold it this way. Even if I hold it upside down or sideways, you can see it from many different angles. You're able to kind of walk around, your eyes are able to walk around and look at different sides of your paper sculpture. So now I will show you using the glue stick, works just the same. When you're using the glue stick, the bottom twists on most of them, but you should never have it any higher than that because when you press it down, it'll just come squeezing out the side. So let's take a little bit. I make that same kind of little glue dot there. And now maybe I want to add, wow, this might be a little tall. Let's see how it goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's usually a good chance for the glue to take hold. I'm going to do it again. A little glue here, a little glue here, and maybe this time I'm just going to put it like this. It won't attach to that first piece. And I'm going to fill my page with all kinds, oops, <laughs> stuck to my finger. I did it the wrong way. There we go. What we're going to notice is I showed you how if I take my curl or my circle that I'm going to make, you see I can just turn it around and make it into a circle shape. Like I did here, I put them down like this. What if I do it like this and this and I hold down? There we go. Good, you're counting. And I'm, whoop, it needs some more glue. So the glue stick you're gonna notice doesn't hold as well as the regular glue, but it sure can hold. I forgot to count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it kind of starts to look like a playground or it can look like a roller coaster. Somebody else told me it looked like a skate park. Whatever comes out of it, it's A-OK. -okay. It's a sculpture. So we're going for sculpture, not for a collage today. Oh, look at that interesting shape. And that's basically what you're going to do for your paper sculpture. I like to kind of move around. I like to sometimes add a little bit onto another piece and then maybe go like here. Maybe this one will go under and I'll add a little glue. Oh, that definitely looks like a slide to me. Whatever you choose is gonna work out great. Just little glue dots though, because you see when you press on it, you don't want it to squeeze out the side. I'm gonna show you how it looks sometimes when people don't do it correctly. They take their glue and they pour and they have so much glue. Watch what happens when I start to turn it over. Uh-oh, uh-oh, it's gonna get all over my paper. And now watch when I actually press down. When I press down, it starts to come out all these sides and it takes a really long time to dry. So I'm gonna actually just cover that up by bringing it over here, making, oops, see it's so slippery when I use so much. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you see I'm starting to get it all over my hands when I use too much glue. So try not to do that, okay? All right, so add as many as you like. I have a bunch more to add to mine, which I probably will, because I love when it's so full. I have all of these still to do, to add to my paper sculpture. But before I do anything else, I want you to remember to write your name anywhere you like. For my friends in school who maybe don't have the materials in front of them, what I would like you to do is I'd like you to start decorating your paper that you're going to glue strips down to. So if you're in the class and you don't have those paper strips ready for you, then maybe what you can do is you can use either your pencil or if you have crayons, you could start to add those lines. Remember when we did the lines for the Roy G. Biv? 
We made all kinds of lines come together. So you can do something like that, but instead of having them go straight across, why don't you think about making lines that travel all over your paper, kind of like that loop I made, or maybe that zigzag that I folded. Fill your paper with all kinds of lines, and as many as you can, use as many colors as you can, maybe here, I might even make one that looked the way I curled it around my finger. And just fill your paper with all kinds of beautiful lines. Maybe they're gonna be dotted lines. Maybe they're going to be curvy lines, zigzag lines, zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. Any kind of lines you want, just fill your paper. Remember to write your name. And if you can, maybe you could take it home and work on your paper strips at home. All right, hopefully you have a chance to do that, guys. All right, have a great time.